Hey guys, so what I'll be doing in this video is comparing the difference between the previous MLX skates that we saw, the um, hybrid ice hockey skate, with the new Eastern uh, Mako skates and seeing the difference between these two boots. This is a video that's been um, quite heavily requested ever since I posted the review on the Makos. Uh, one thing I will point out is if you want a bit more of an in-depth review, there is a written version as well as a video version to this video that has a lot more information and also some of the um, things that I didn't like about these skates, so that will be in the video um, description down below if you'd like to check that out. So starting out taking a look at the different blades that these two have, of course with the new Eastern Makos it's the ES4 stainless steel, with the MLX ones it was just a, it was a stainless steel but it didn't really have a name, it was just um, part of the MLX holder and the MLX steel so we'll just refer to this as the MLX blade. But the main difference between these two blades is that I'll give you some close up shots after this clip right here but you might be able to notice along the toe section of the Eastern skate over here you can see there's a very very small portion of the blade sticking out and as you go further back towards the heel there's more and more of the blade poking out. That's the aggressive pitch that we were talking about in the review if you can see that over there which puts you instead of being completely flat on the ice it puts you so your heels are raised and you're more on your toes while you're on the ice. So I thought this would be one of the best ways to show you the um, difference in pitch of the blade, that, like I was referring to earlier on in the video. If you notice this, the, with these 5P coins over here, how much of the 5P sticks out the bottom of the blade when I put the um, coin much closer to the front. But if I move it much closer to the back, you can see that practically the whole 5P sits on the blade, just showing you that the blade is at more of an angle, an aggressive pitch, which puts less of the blade's portion out along the front in the toe section, but much, much more of the blade out in the heel section over there. Taking a look at this one over here, you can see with the MLX blade, it's practically the same throughout the entire blade portion. So there isn't a bigger portion sticking around the heel um, as there is around the toe section. So if you were in the skates, you wouldn't be as um, and it, you wouldn't be in as an aggressive position as you would be if you were in the Makos. You'd be much much more flat on the ice rather than being in that upright on your toes position that the Mako skates put you in. From there, moving on to taking a look at the holders. Uh, I did measure these holders, and also the feeling that I got while I was in these two different holders is um, with the MLX holder, it felt. Uh, very very similar to the um, Bauer Tuke holder, so it was quite an aggressive a lean, but it wasn't as aggressive as the um, CXN holder that the Mako skates have. And um, after measuring these two holders, that does confirm that, that the heel portion on the on the MLX skates sits slightly lower down to the ice than the um, one in the Makos with the CXN holder, which puts you again at that m much more of an aggressive lean, um, which kind of uh, benefits you. So if you're going to be in those positions where you need to be able to give a quick burst of energy, these skates put you in the position to allow you to do that much, much easier and much, and much more effectively as well. Another thing that they changed on the different holders with the MLX holder over here, if I move the um, skate up, you notice that the, um, the way that the holder is attached to the boot isn't with rivets, it's with these um, uh, screws over here that came with a special screwdriver inside the MLX box which actually allows you to remove the holder from home yourself. Uh, the main purpose of this was to change the alignment of the holder and the blade so you could move it slightly more towards the centre of the boot or a little bit more to the left or the right depending on what sort of a skater you were and what um, sort of alignment would benefit the way you performed on the ice. And this has been changed with the new Eastern skates, if I move this up for you to take a look at, you can see that the holder has been riveted in. So the position that you get these holders and blades in is just what it is, and um, you don't get to change that from home. Of course you can go to a hockey store and have the boot re-riveted, um, re but that's not something that I would ever advise anyone to do. But that's another thing that was changed on the um, Easterns compared to the MLX. So taking a look at the quarter package on these two different skates over here, uh, quickly covering some of the materials that we've um, seen on both of these different skates. With the MLX skates over here, the quarter package was constructed with that um, composite um, uh, carbon fiber uh, structure that we spoke about in the review of these boots over here. We also saw some Kevlar um, inserts over here to sort of increase the durability and strength of these skates, as long as with all of these synthetic leathers that we can see along the sides over here. You can also see the weave of the carbon fiber along the toe portion over here, and also around the back portion over here. But one of the features of the MLX skate was that these skates were incredibly thermoformable, meaning that when these skates were baked, they would really, really take to the shape of your foot. Uh, one of the reasons that they did that was the idea behind these skates was it wasn't to set a certain sort of standard where it would be mid-volume around the toe section, around the forefoot, it would be uh, low volume like some of the other skates that we're used to on the market. The idea behind these skates was they would all come in a sort of a very stiff box shape. They didn't have really any shape to them until you baked these skates. As soon as you baked them and you put your feet inside them, they would take to the shape of your foot, giving each individual user a customised fit that would suit their specific needs and requirements, which is exactly the same principle that the Mako skates have adopted. So when people ask what sort of volumes are there, it's very difficult to answer those questions because the skate's designed to take to the shape of each individual's foot and give them the sort of volumes and spaces and um, all that sort of stuff that each skater requires. 
But um, moving on to the eastern skates, the sort of construction that we can see there, again they feature the same carbon, f the, the carbon composite um, quarter package, which is um, all of the benefits of those we touched on in the video uh, review of these things. Again, we can see the carbon fiber weave along the portions over here, the back portion around the heel, and if I move the skate up, you can see the carbon fiber weave just above the toe box over there as well in these two gaps. Taking a look at some of the sides, you can see that they've used a lot of these reinforced plastic materials over here um, that ha features this sort of net netted weave over here. This might look like it's a sort of uh, brush nylon liner or something like that, but it's actually all reinforced plastic. Um, this just helps to beef up the durability of the skate and also resist some of those skate cuts and stick slashes that you're used to, as well as offering, again, this reinforced padding along the sides there. This is a solid um, a reinforced plastic to keep the quarter package of the skate off the ice when you're taking those low turns so you don't have those high wear marks, which is exactly the same on the MLX. So it's nice to see those features have been moved over. One of the things that was pretty unique about the MLX and Eastern skates is if we turn them over, where you'd normally see an outsole, where it'd be a carbon fiber outsole, carbon composite outsole, this doesn't really have an outsole as such. As the entire structure of the skate is that um, same material that the outsole would be constructed of, they've kind of eliminated the need to have that as a separate piece at the bottom of the skate. The boot offers enough rigidity and of course um, good energy transfer, so the need for a separate outsole as such has been eliminated. That's the exact same thing if I turn the Makos upside down. You can see that they don't feature an outsole as such that we're used to seeing on some of the other traditional hockey skates. But they do feature the perforations and holes, similar to the MLX, so any heat and moisture can exit the skate through the bottom over there. So one of the points I'll definitely mention that goes a sort of a, on a negative side towards the Eastern Mako skates is going to be the quarter package. In terms of the stiffness of the quarter package, I was personally expecting to see the quarter a bit more stiffer than it is at the minute. I myself am about 11 stone, but if you're a hockey player that's sort of, you know, 15 to 16 stone, uh, much, much bigger than myself, how long are these skates realistically going to last? For my sort of build, um, I know these skates will last me a, a good few years, but if you're sort of uh, much heavier than I am, much more built than I am, how long are these things going to last? If I do a, a quick squeeze test um, and compare them to the MLX over here, keeping in mind these MLX skates are about three or four years old and I've been using these um, since MLX launched um, a few years ago. If I pick these up, keeping in mind of course that these are heavily used and they're three to four years old, if I show you how stiff the quarter package is, this is me squeezing it as hard as I can and you can see that there is barely any give in the quarter package over there, even though these are really, really old skates. If I move these over to the side and do the same thing with the Eastern Makos, you can see straight away that the quarter package isn't as stiff as you'd be expecting it to be with these skates. So the question that um, I have in mind is, of course, if you're much bigger than myself, how long are these skates going to last? So if you're intending on getting these boots and you're a much bigger um, skater than myself or a hockey player than myself, you're bigger than 11 stone, it'd be interesting to get some feedback on how these things have held up. Do you think that they're going to last one season or they're going to last a few seasons? So that'd be um, a bit of food for thought for you guys to um, post some um, comments down below and let me know on what you think the sort of lifetime of these skates is going to be like. So the next thing we're going to take a quick look at is going to be the tongue on the um, MLXs to start off with. You can see that on the front here it features the synthetic leathers, so you can expect a very traditional sort of um, soft feel. Um, it doesn't have a metatarsal or a lace bite bar outside like the um, uh, Easterns do, which we'll show you in a minute. But you can see that this outline over here, where the um, lace bite bar on the inside is pushing through the um, synthetic leathers on the front, the lace bite bar is actually in between the foams and the plastic leathers or the synthetic leathers on the front there. So it does have a metatarsal guard are reducing the um, sort of risk or problems that are associated with lace bite. But turning it on the inside, you can see on the inside of the tongue over here, it's it's not as thick as some of the other tongues on some of the other models of skates, like some of the Bowers with the um, 40 ounce felt tongues and stuff like that. These are very, very um, sort of thin, but because of those metatarsal guards there, they do a good enough job, and they also don't restrict your um, range of motion on the ice, allowing your ankle to flex fully forward and back while you're inside these skates, which is one of the things that I like about them so much. But um, one interesting thing with the MLX skates is that you can see the tongue obviously starts over here, it goes all the way down through the laces, and then it has this bolt over here. The reason that Eastern, or sorry, um, MLX did that was so this, these tongues could be replaceable. If the tongue got battered and needed to be replaced, um, you could easily do that without having to replace the entire skate. And um, the bolt over here, you can see that's not sort of a, a very nice look, but I had to replace my bolt because the original one popped out. So this is just a replacement one there that doesn't really fit that well, but it does the job. So I just thought I'd point that out. Moving on to the Easton's tongue over here, if we take a look at the Makos, you can see this tongue over here again sort of features these synthetic leathers on the front with the Mako design over there, but this time you can actually see the metatarsal or the lace bite bar inserted right there. Again, it's going to be a very, very thin tongue, not too thick, but it does the job and also doesn't restrict your range of motion on the ice, allowing your ankle to flex forward and backwards. 
So these two tongs are very, very similar, very, very thin, but with those metatarsal guards, they do prevent lace bite very well. And again, on the inside, if we take a look there, you can see it's the um, standard brush nylon liner, but it is fairly thin. It's not sort of um, as thick as some of the other tongues, but I will mention that the um, tongue on the Mako skates is thicker than the one on the MLX. In terms of the tongue going all the way down, again it does, but what they've done with the um, Eastern Mako skates, instead of the tongue being removable, which you can see it's not, what they have sort of changed is that the tongue starts at the top over here and goes all the way through the skates and into the toe box. And the idea behind that is to reduce the negative or empty space or unnecessary empty space inside the skate around the toe box, which is a big uh, problem in some of the other skates that have been released. So next up will be the tendon guard on the MLX skates. Uh, the tendon guard on the MLX skates was the first tendon to be separately attached onto the skates. You can see that it's attached with these three bolts over there, and the third one's just around the corner there. The idea behind these um, tendons over here was that they allowed or they promoted a more natural and free uh, movement on the ice, giving the skater a greater range of motion as the um, tendon guard could flex backwards when it needed to, uh, which allowed you to hit your corners much, much sharper and much, much harder than um, any other skate at the time. Um, besides the um, this over here, you can see that this tendon over here is very similar to the one on the Mako skates that we'll show you in a minute. The only real difference between these two is that the MLX tendon was much, much bigger and a bit stiffer than the one on the Mako skates. And it also wasn't anywhere near as um, asymmetrical as the, um, the new tendon that's featured on the Mako skates. So now taking a look at Easton's X tendon or their version of the tendon guard, the first thing you notice is that it's much, much smaller than the MLX tendon. Um, it's also a lot more flexy, as you can see there. It's pretty easy to flex with just one finger over there, whereas the MLX one was much, much stiffer. So this one actually um, allows you to get much, much lower in your turns as it sort of um, flexes back much easier than the other one. One of the other things I also noticed was that instead of it being held on with three bolts, it's now only held on with two. There is nothing down there holding it on. So again, it'll be interesting to see if that will affect the um, sort of durability of it or if it's going to be easy to sort of pop off. Um, so that's just going to be one of those things that will be a test of time as we use these skates for a few uh, more uh, months more. One of the other things um, also that's slightly different is that you can see that the design of this entire boot and also the tendon is a lot more asymmetrically designed. Uh, the idea behind that is going to be um, Easton's new concept of the art of speed. The um, asymmetrical pattern on the boot allows the um, skate to fall in line with the direction of travel, which just makes uh, using these skates feel a lot more natural, which is definitely going to be a plus. But those are the um, sort of main differences with the tendon um, that I've noticed myself. So taking a look inside the skates, the two different liners of these skates is pretty traditional. The Eastern Mako does um, have a slightly more superior uh, form of the brush nylon liner that's been hydrophobically and antimicrobial treated, whereas the MLX one is a more traditional brush nylon liner that still does have some moisture wicking properties. Um, but uh, the, some of the additional changes that you might notice around the necks of the skates, these portions of the skate along here and also along here. The MLX don't really feature a comfort edge as such. They do have some extra padding to prevent the um, edge of the skate from digging into you too badly and giving you sort of cuts and bruises. Whereas the um, Eastern Makos over here do feature a nice comfort edge, which has a lot of padding to sort of um, soften the blow when you're in your tight turns. As this skate is sort of um, designed to allow you to corner very aggressively, the comfort edge over here just keeps the... Um, um, upper portions of your foot safe so the um, skate doesn't dig in and cut and bruise you as you're in your tight turns. But um, taking a look at the actual fit and the structure of these two different boots, as I said earlier on in the video, these skates really heavily rely on uh, the thermoformable properties of the skates. When you first get these boots, especially the Makos, they aren't really in an anatomical shape as such. The boot structure itself will be seriously altered once you start to bake these skates and allow them to contour to the shape of your foot. That's why the thermoformable properties on these skates have been so highly sort of been promoted and notified because you really do need to bake these skates to get the best sort of result out of the fit. The actual structure of the skate will completely change and it will mould and contour to the shape of each individual skater's needs which is one of the reasons why it's so important to mention that baking the skates is definitely going to be recommended but of course you'll still get these, um, a similar sort of uh, style of um, the skate contouring to the shape of your foot after you just use them if you want to go for a more traditional form of breaking them in but it's a, the same sort of thing with the MLX skates as well. In terms of the negative sides to the different fits of these skates or the way that the inside is, is layered out, with the MLX one thing that I've always had is that the eyelets on the inside of the skate, only on one of the skates, when I put my foot in and out, um, has a sort of a sharp edge that um, scratches along my foot. But as these MLX skates were handmade, things like those, so those sort of defects are, are quite common and quite expected. That could be easily solved by putting a bit of padding on top of it or simply just filing it down. 
Um, however, with the Eastern Mako skates, I didn't have any sort of bits that were scratching onto me, but one thing I will mention is that these things, to get your foot into them when you first get these things, is, is quite a job. The way that the um, uh, top of the um, skate is, is designed along these portions over here, it's, as you can see, it kind of wraps round, um, whereas this side over here is much, much more open. So it's actually quite difficult to get your feet inside these skates, even if you undo the laces. So that's something that I'll definitely mention. But again, once you start to bake these skates and break them in a bit more, all of these sort of issues will be slightly more relaxed. So to summarise the um, information that I've gathered from taking a look at both of these different skate models, it's pretty clear to see that the um, Eastern uh, Mako skates could be thought of a more fine-tuned and refined version of the MLX skate with a few influences from Eastern. For me personally, all of the advantages that the Mako skates have far outweigh the few disadvantages. For anyone out there that's been looking for an MLX substitute, the Eastern Makos are definitely going to be the new skate that you guys should go for. It's going to give you guys a very similar feel to the MLX, but it, as I said earlier on, it will be a lot more fine-tuned and refined. So it's a much, um, think of it as a much more refined version of the MLX skates. For anyone that hasn't used MLX or Eastern previously, but is thinking about getting the Makos, if you want a new innovative product that's going to increase your range of motion, giving you a, a much more natural and free um, form of movement on the ice, then I definitely recommend giving the Makos a try.